Hi everyone. In this episode, I want to talk about how narcissists and other toxic people react when you refuse to engage and internalize their abuse, projections, and manipulations. Narcissists thrive on being able to control you. Narcissists love to know that they can control every aspect of your life, what you're doing, how you're behaving, and more importantly, they are able to control your emotional reactions to the things that they are doing to you, whether that's good reactions or bad reactions. Narcissists thrive on being able to elicit any form of an emotional reaction from you. During the devaluation phase, the narcissist barely has to do anything. The narcissist gives you the bare minimum, but you are giving them a steady source of supply because you are chasing them around, begging them to please treat you better. You know, you want the person back that you had that you when you first met them. And that's never going to happen because that person wasn't real to begin with. It was just the narcissist MO on how they hook people. They go from person to person that they date pretending to be the perfect or idealized version that they think you want in order to secure you as a source of supply. And during devaluation, the narcissist is reaping the rewards with doing the bare minimum because you feel like you're the problem and the narcissist gaslights you into believing you are the problem and that is why they are treating you so bad. The narcissist blames you for their poor behavior when in reality, the narcissist knows what they're doing. The narcissist is doing anything they can to be able to control your emotional reactions to their manipulations and abuse. But what happens once you catch on? What happens once you say, okay, narcissist, something's going on here. I don't know what it is, but I know I'm not the problem. I know I do not deserve this. And you know, you've tried to reason with them constantly, but there is no reasoning with the narcissist because they will always flip the narrative back into their favor by using techniques such as gaslighting, blame shifting, and DARVO. And if you're unaware of what DARVO is, DARVO is a manipulation tactic. It is an extreme form of gaslighting and blame shifting that narcissists always deploy because they refuse to take any accountability for anything that they do. And because a narcissist is unable to accept accountability for their actions, their behaviors, their abuse, they always deploy DARVO. And it stands, it's D-A-R-V-O. It stands for deny and then attack the victim's character or the person trying to hold them accountable. And then they reverse the victim and offender roles. If you have ever tried to hold a narcissist accountable for something and they throw all kinds of word salad and crazy making and gaslighting and no matter what you say, they turn it around, it's still your fault. And by the end, you're so exhausted, you end up apologizing to them because you truly are sorry for bringing it up in the first place because you didn't know it was gonna be all of that. And that's the whole point. That's why the narcissist does it. Because the narcissist is, no, the narcissist is not going to accept accountability or responsibility when they know they can get you to internalize it for them. And that is how the narcissist regulates themselves. The narcissist needs you to internalize their rage, their inner turmoil, and their traumas, and their bad, foul behavior. They need you to do that, and that's what your emotional reaction is. The moment a narcissist gaslights you, projects things onto you, accuses you, punishes you with silent treatment, cheats on you, you're constantly reacting. And when you react, that signals to the narcissist that you have, in fact, accepted responsibility for their bad behavior, or why else would you be acting so defensively if you weren't the problem? And that's what the narcissist thinks. And in fact, they'll even gaslight you and say that to you. If you try to hold a narcissist accountable for something and you start, you know, they gaslight you and you start defending yourself, the narcissist will look at you and calmly look at you defending yourself. You must be guilty or you wouldn't need to defend yourself. And if you notice, narcissists are extremely calm. They will poke at you and poke at you because they need a reaction out of you. And then the moment you react, they're completely calm and point out how erratic your behavior is, how upsetting your behavior is, how bad your behavior is. And the reason why they're calm is because once you've internalized all their traumas for them, once you have become a container to hold all of that for them, they are relieved. They, they feel a sense of release. They feel 
relieved of any responsibility, any accountability. They feel released from that because you're now internalizing it. So they have regulated themselves and their emotions and oh, they feel like they can breathe again. And that's when they leave you traumatized because you are traumatized because you've internalized all the trauma that they're throwing at you. They need you to do that. And then they go out and they perform for the outside world like nothing has ever happened. You know, and then you get to the point when you're like, look, narcissist, I'm not doing this anymore. This isn't working for me. And it becomes very difficult to leave because you are trauma bonded. And trauma bonds are the equivalent to any other chemical addiction, any other type of addiction. It is the equivalent to a heroin addiction. It is very, very serious, so it's so important for you to understand why, you know, people are like, oh, well, if you're so unhappy, why don't you just leave? Well, you do want to leave. You do want to leave. But unfortunately, you are chemically addicted to this cycle of abuse because the narcissist trains you. They give you the bare minimum, and the moment they feel you pulling away, they throw you some breadcrumbs or show you a glimpse of the person that you first met and it gives you hope or they future fake you to keep you holding on and working for them. And then once you decide, okay, I'm not going to react to this anymore. I'm not going to do this anymore. First of all, the narcissist doesn't believe that you are ever capable of walking away from them. The narcissist doesn't believe that you will ever be strong enough, number one, to figure them out and leave because they've never seen anybody do it. No one has ever figured them out before, but you most likely. And that's why you're here listening to this. When you refuse to internalize everything that the narcissist is blaming you for or throwing at you, they feel a loss of control. And that creates a narcissistic injury, which can cause them to become more combative and verbally abusive. It can be very, very traumatizing watching a narcissist reaction to you not reacting. And that is because they've received an injury and they will retaliate or seek revenge in many ways. And a lot of it is through coercion and coercive control tactics. Narcissists like to keep vic their victims in a state of fear because it is easier to control someone who's in a constant state of fear or anxiety. And as you know, the narcissist had you constantly walking around on eggshells, terrified that you might upset them in some way because you just do not want to be treated like that. And the narcissist conditions your behavior. They condition you to serve them. They condition you to be quiet. They condition you to sit there and be obedient because you know, that if you're not obedient to the narcissist in their eyes, the form of punishments that come, the silent treatments, cheating, the threats of leaving, just it never ends. And the abuse gets worse and worse as time goes on. And they break you down and break you down until there's nothing left of you. But then you decide, I'm not going to do this anymore. And that's when the narcissist can get extremely... As I stated before, combative, verbally abusive, and the retaliation tactics will ramp up. Narcissists love to do things like, you know, threaten your financial stability. And if the narcissist has made you dependent on them financially, they will threaten to take away your resources. They will start withholding money so you can't leave. They will make sure you don't have any food. They won't let you eat what you want. They won't let you go where you want to go. And a lot of times, if you don't live with a narcissist, they will control your life. I know this happened to me. I couldn't go anywhere in the town that I lived in because he had his friends. If I ran into his friends somewhere, I tried to go someplace because there was only a handful of places to go. And if one of his friends saw me, he had the friends trained to immediately jump on the party line, get on a text message, get on the phone and say, Danielle's here. She's doing this. She's doing that, which then you know, he started abusing me more even after he had discarded me and done all these things to me. But they do this so that you don't even want to leave the house. You don't want to go anywhere. And narcissists, they entrap you. Narcissists love to use law enforcement. When you refuse to engage or internalize a narcissist, you know, bad behavior in their projections, they retaliate from the narcissistic injury by making up outrageous lies in order to regain control over you. Because if they start lying on you or running smear campaigns on you, the first thing you want to do is defend yourself. 
You want to defend yourself. Well, the moment you do that, even if it's through a third party, the narcissist still gains narcissistic supply because they were able to still control your reaction, even if it was indirectly. So narcissists will do things like use law enforcement. If you refuse to engage with a narcissist or react, they'll get an injury, so they'll immediately make up something and call cops, call the cops on you to try to have you arrested because the narcissist needs you to be defending yourself. They need to show you how dare you try to threaten their control. How dare you not internalize their projections? How dare you not believe that you are the problem? So the narcissist will punish you by using many coercive of control tactics. And law enforcement is a big one. I've talked about this in another video. I, the man that I dated, when I started putting up boundaries and refused to take the abuse anymore, oh my gosh, he made up he made up that I broke out some windows and called the cops on me, used his children to abuse me, made up that his daughter saw me do it and you know sent the cops to my house to try to have me arrested for something that never even happened. And never even happened. I was out with a buddy from out of town, checked in someplace, and the deputy had to confirm it. But this is what narcissists do. When you refuse to internalize their bad behavior, when you refuse to accept responsibility for the bad things that they're doing, they get an injury and they will retaliate and they love to do anything they can to regain control over you. See, before, when you were still internalizing things and you were reacting, if you didn't react accordingly, the narcissist would punish you with things like silent treatments, little smear campaigns, a lot of gaslighting and other things. But then as you get stronger and you keep refusing to allow them to control every aspect of who you are because they need you to be obedient, you are there to be of service to them. And that is it. And if you refuse to be obedient, you do get punished. As you know, they will gaslight you, silent treatment, anything that they can think of that will, an elicit, that will elicit a reaction from you so that they can gain narcissistic supply. Everything a narcissist engages in is meant to gain narcissistic supply. And having complete control over you is the number one way to gain narcissistic supply because they have to do the bare minimum and you are constantly reacting thinking that it's your fault, internalizing why you're being treated so badly. And the narcissist will treat you worse and worse and worse. And they watch you internalize this and make you believe that it's your fault that they have to treat you so badly. This is how they wear you down. This is how they keep you in control. This is how you lose your entire sense of self by the time that relationship is over. And a narcissist doesn't stop. A narcissist doesn't stop once they've discarded you because the discard comes out of nowhere and it's, it's meant to shock you. The reason why a narcissist discards you the way that they do for a new supply is because it is meant to traumatize you and keep you in a state of shock. When you are in a state of shock and traumatized, you are easier to control still. You are still giving the narcissist supply because they know they've traumatized you. They know that you are just, oh my God, what's happening? Why is this happening? Why did this person do this to me? I don't understand. I, that's the point. The narcissist is trying to traumatize you and that's how they keep you attached to them and that's how they keep getting narcissistic supply from you even after you've been discarded. And the narcissist refuses to give you closure because a narcissist, a narcissist discard is an illusion. And I will do another episode on this. Only you, only you can do a final discard because a narcissist never gives people closure and always leaves some form of communication open so that they can come back whenever they want. And a narcissist, you know, they think, they think you're always going to take them back. They think that you will always be there waiting for them. And no matter what they do to you, they can come back and do it some more. And I promise you, every time they come back, their abuse gets worse and worse and the discards get more brutal. But a lot of times a narcissist only comes back to punish you, to try to finish the job. Narcissists will come back when they don't have any other sources of supply and they need a source of supply. That's the only way they can regulate themselves. They need narcissistic supply in order to, well, breathe. The way we need air, 
A narcissist needs supply. They need to be devaluing someone. They need narcissistic supply in order to live. So before I wrap this up, let me go over real quick some of the ways that narcissists react when you refuse to engage, react, or internalize their manipulations and abuse. When you stop defending yourself and you finally just walk away. A narcissist, number one, will ramp up their abuse. They will become verbally abusive. They will ramp up gaslighting because they will poke at you and poke at you and poke at you and they won't stop. They won't stop until they get a reaction from you. So when you choose to respond instead of react, a narcissist doesn't get narcissistic supply and it forces them to basically you become a narcissistic mirror and it forces them to look at themselves because while you're reacting, that says to the narcissist, that signals to them, hey, that person must be the problem. Look at how they're reacting. And what I'm, the narcissists don't think what they're doing is that bad, which is part of the gaslighting. Narcissists always minimize their bad behavior and tell you, oh, you're being dramatic. Oh, you're just too sensitive. Oh, you're just insecure. Oh, what I'm doing to you is not that bad. Stop blowing it out of proportion. And then what do you do? You defend yourself, which then gives the narcissist more narcissistic supply and the cycle goes on and on and on because you keep internalizing it, believing that I must be the problem. Why else would this person be treating me so badly? And those are just projections. Narcissists project how they feel about themselves onto other people and then you internalize it because you can't understand why someone needs to treat you so badly. You think, my God, what's wrong with me? Why do people need to treat me like this? And you know, when narcissists run smear campaigns on you, this is also how they get narcissistic supply. Because while they're running smear campaigns on you, telling everybody how awful you are, setting you up, dog whistling you in public so that you react and all the people in their lives see is your reaction to constant abuse, you then start internalizing again because you're like, oh my God, the narcissist has told you how everybody doesn't like you, that everybody thinks you're so awful and everyone is in agreement with them. Well, yeah, they are because all they ever see is how you react to the narcissist abuse and they don't realize that they're being triangulated just the same way you are. And I talked about this in another video. So you know, you're sitting there thinking, oh my God, why are all these people treating me so badly? Why is the narcissist being so bad to me? And you internalize that because you think it must be something you've done. And no matter how many times you tell yourself, man, I know I'm not doing anything bad to the narcissist. I know I'm not doing anything bad to these people. Well, you know, the narcissist sees you internalizing that and they're getting supply and they enjoy what they're doing. They know what they're doing to you. But this is how they control you, which ultimately reinforces to them their superiority over you because, well, if they can control you, they must be powerful and they truly believe this. And they, you know, they put on one heck of a show for the world. They truly, truly do. So when you refuse to internalize, narcissists will do other forms of control tactics, which is course of control. If the verbal abuse and gaslighting are no longer working to make you become more obedient, they give you brutal discards to try to get you back in line. They will constantly discard you, tell you, I'm done with you. Get out of here. Get out of my life. I don't want you. Just leave. And they'll say these things to you because then you're like, oh my gosh, why are you treating me so bad again? And then you beg and plead with them, which is more narcissistic supply. And when you stop doing that, when you stop doing that, that is when the narcissist really ramps up the course of control, financial abuse. They will, you know, threaten your home, your shelter, threaten to take kids from you. They love to use children to abuse people and control people. I said they use law enforcement, money, any form of resources, anything that they can to let you know that if you don't get back in line and you do not remain obedient and do as they say and sit there quiet and behave and give them their narcissistic supply no matter what they do, these are the horrible things that they do to people. You know, course of control tactics are just, they're absolutely devastating to a person's life. They really are. I mean, you think a smear campaign, 
is tough. You think some gaslighting is tough, but the moment a narcissist starts messing with your resources or taking things from you, you no longer have a car. Well, if you don't do A, B, and C, I'm not going to give you any money for food. I'm not going to give you child support. I'm not going to help you with the kids. Narcissists are notorious for not paying child support. They don't want to pay child support. They refuse it because they've got better things to do with their money. And people cannot understand how narcissists also view their children as roles, as characters in a play. Everyone is just an extension of the narcissist, including their children. Children are there to make the narcissist look some type of way. The same thing with getting married or being in relationships. It's all a show. It's all a front. And when you refuse to play along anymore and you refuse to internalize that abuse, when you refuse to let them control you and keep stealing your sense of self, oh my gosh, that's an injury, an injury that a narcissist just cannot live with. And a lot of times after you've left and you've permanently walked away, number one, the narcissist doesn't believe it because no one in their life has ever just walked away from them and closed the door permanently. So the narcissist will hoover sometimes years later just to see if they can still sneak in there and break you down. So be careful because remember a narcissist, they never forget an injury. They never forget an injury and sometimes they'll wait years before they come back and sneak one, you know, to come back and just kind of tear you down and see if they can ruin everything that you built back up after leaving them. So be very cautious guys. And one more thing before I go, if any of you are interested, I do have a PDF version of my book, Decoding the Narcissist and the Psychological Manipulation Tactics They Use. I have a copy of that available for download on Selfie.com. There is a link in my bio. I encourage you to check it out. I go through all the psychological manipulation tactics that narcissists use, why they use them, and how you can effectively respond when you are being faced with these types of manipulation tactics. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay strong, stay safe, and keep getting the knowledge. You are all going to be amazing.